Hey guys, this is Alex Cook. I was a captain in the United States Army. If you want, I can upload my DD-214 to my website, alexcook.com, just so you know that this is not uh, a LARP that I am who I am claiming to be. Uh, I have nothing to hide in my record at all. Um, obviously, if I upload it, I'm gonna keep out uh, my personal address or, or social security number, things like that, but uh, I have absolutely nothing to hide in my record. So uh, I wanna make a statement on the Vanessa Guillen case and uh, what you've heard a lot about uh, from Fort Hood. So there's two sides of the story that you've heard. Uh, you've heard the story of Fort Hood PAO and you've heard the story of uh, some lawyers that have gotten involved in the case, some people in the media that are trying to make a name for themselves. But uh, you haven't heard the story of soldiers who were actually at this unit. And uh, I wanna talk about that because I'm here to make this video to correct the record on a number of things since some of what you've heard in the media or, or social media, maybe on Facebook, Twitter, whatever, some of it is true and is valid. Some of it is partially true and some is completely false. So I debated whether or not I wanted to make this video because, well, I was saying, you know, am, am I too late in addressing this? Uh, should I just let things slide now that I'm out of the military? Is this really my problem anymore? But you know, one, one of the things Army stresses is to do the, the hard right choice instead of the easy wrong choice. And I think if I let this slide, then it would be the easy wrong choice. So I, I'm making this video because I got to blow the whistle on some things here. And uh, the investigation that you probably heard about, the, the Fort Hood Independent Review Committee and the 15-6 investigation, like the, these investigations were sham investigations. And I'll, I'll be honest, my frustration also goes with the media too. And uh, with Congress to a degree in that, you know, after having Fort Hood under a microscope from pretty every every media agency in the world, social media, is that they took these investigations as just gospel truth and didn't question them at all when some of these reports are probably valid. Uh, some of the 15-6 told me things that I actually wasn't aware of and probably some things that, that was good that, that they dug up. Uh, but some uh, in the 15-6 and also the, the FHIRC investigation were, uh, it, it had inconsistencies at best and some of the reports were just straight up false statements. And yes, I am willing to say that the report had false statements. And by the way, I can get you a stack of sworn statements up to the ceiling corroborating everything that I'm saying. Now, uh, I ask that if you're watching this video, you watch to the very end before uh, forming an opinion on it, because I realize uh, this, I was about to say is a sensitive topic, but let's be honest, it's was, it, it was a sensitive topic for us in the unit people that actually knew her, like myself. For most of you on social media just trying to clout chase, you, you don't actually care, okay? Um, I'll, I'll talk about that more in a little bit, but that's why I have comments off on this video because uh, not really interested in, in clout on this. I'm not really interested in what a Chinese PSYOPs has to say and how they probably uh, you know push some wrong information out there. So I'm just here to tell uh, the truth of what actually happened, uh, what I've seen, and what can be corroborated. Nothing that I'm gonna say in this video is OPSEC. Nothing is law enforcement sensitive. I don't even have access to that information. Uh, also bear in mind, look, I'm, I just got out as a captain. So if you wanna ask me, hey, why didn't the commanding general or why didn't CID do such and such, like you would have to ask them. Like I, I'm hardly the person that runs Fort Hood. I can only talk about what I've seen what I've done, and just this is this is what I've seen. This is the truth as as I see it, and as the soldiers in the unit who have not come forward to speak yet um, ha have seen as well. So the first thing that I want to talk about is the homicide investigation itself, uh, which that too was completely botched, and that led to uh, to everything that that then followed with the subsequent investigations. Uh, this was a completely botched investigation, uh, not just on CID's end, but also the, the FHIRC and the 15-6, which none of that would have happened if CID didn't botch their investigation in the first place. Because, um, I mean, let's be honest, been in the news that Ford Bragg has seen an unusual amount of murders. Uh, I don't see nearly as much media attention on that. Uh, maybe there should be. Maybe there should be to, to dig into what's going on there. But let's let's take this one step at a time. Uh Let's talk about the homicide investigation itself first. So what would have solved this case in 24 hours, maybe even less than that, was a security camera. Like a $100 Best Buy security camera would have made this an open and shut case like the next day, which speaking of, so there was a lot of wrong comments on social media saying like, hey, why isn't the unit looking for her? Or you know, has someone alerted her chain of command as if like that wasn't the very first thing that happened. So uh, the very next day, 
all of us Q leaders were given sworn statements on, on any time it was the, the, the last time we've seen her. We were crawling through drainage pipes, um, you know, ripping apart pretty much the whole squad and footprint uh, for, for any possible location. Uh, so that the, the, the whole idea that we put no effort in looking into her, I, I don't think this was just a social media rumor. I think a lot of this probably was Chinese psyops. Uh, maybe just, you know, random trolls uh, on the internet as well. Uh, but, you know, one thing to keep in mind is, you know, we don't, we don't talk to media. That, that's, why, that's why I'm making this as a long form video because, uh, well, I'm, I'll, I'll get to that in a little bit later, but, you know, we, we let PAO do the talking because, I mean, you know how the media works is that they're going to take one little statement you say, twist it, take it out of context and make it sound like you said something completely ridiculous. Okay, so that's why we let PAO do the talking, although... I'll get to that in a little bit. They probably made the problem a lot worse. No, they did make the problem a lot worse. PA will completely s screwed up on this one. Uh, one step at a time, though, talking about the homicide investigation. But bear, bear with me on my presentation. I've never made a video like this before. Like, I, I'd much rather go back to talking about cryptocurrencies and, and finance stuff, like my usual YouTube channel. Just someone had to say this. That, that's why I'm making this video. So just bear with me. It's a little choppy because I've, I've never done something like this before. So... Again, what would have solved this case within 24 hours is a $100 security camera that you get from like Best Buy. Like a ring doorbell camera would have solved this case the next day. You know, everyone came in, gave sworn statements. Okay, that's great. But um, in that 150 page report from the Fort Hood Investigation Committee, uh, they made that as one small line buried as a sentence fragment in this report. Like they, they buried the lead. That's what would have solved this case. So in that 150 page report, where about half of it was talking about sexual harassment, uh, they buried the most important part. So I want to be completely clear, like at no point am I saying that sexual harassment is not a problem. Okay, At no point am I saying we shouldn't try to fix sexual harassment. However, what, what happened with these investigations is they went in deciding in advance that sexual harassment was going to be the problem, that this is the be all end all problem at Fort Hood, and, you know, it's something that's talked about in the culture a little bit with stuff like, you know, Me Too and social media. So let's just pin it all on that. Let's just, let's just call it a sexual harassment problem. And then let's ignore everything else and just slap the table on that. It's a sexual harassment problem. We'll call it a day. That's pretty much what happened. And you could tell this because of the questions that they were asking. So we were told to send all our female soldiers to various, you know, um, you know, what do you want to call it? like depositions or, uh, you know, investigation committees, like things where they would talk to the, the committee members, which by the way, male soldiers too can be sexually assaulted or sexual harassed. But, you know, regardless, like they, they were fishing for dirt. Like they decided in advance that sexual harassment was going to be the problem. Like, at, again, at no point am I saying don't try to fix sexual harassment. What I am saying is what does that have to do with the lack of security cameras? Okay. What I am saying is what does that have to do with CID being a complete mess that even your report said that they were using Fort Hood as like a training ground when it was like one of the biggest posts. Uh, even your report said like they were severely understaffed. Uh, what does that have to do with sexual harassment? Now, again, that's why I'm making this a long form video so that what I'm saying cannot be taken out of context. Because if I went to the media with this, you know, they would say, Captain Cook hates sexual harassment victims and wants them to suffer more. Okay, like, cool, cool story. No, like, at, at no point am I saying don't do more to fix sexual harassment. What I'm saying, though, this is being used as a smokescreen to cover for real issues. Now, sexual harassment, yeah, that is an issue, but that's not the issue at hand. Like, this is being used as a, this is being used as a distraction from the real issue on how there's pretty much no physical security on post. Uh, I saw an article the other day that apparently, you know, hundreds of night vision goggles were stolen from, uh, I don't recall which, uh, which installation it was at, but this was, uh, you know, something that made an Army WTF moment. So it seems like physical security is a problem in the Army right now. And any 7-Eleven, any bank, pretty much any private business has figured this out with security cameras. You would think a U.S. military installation, which could face the very real risk of terrorism, uh, in fact, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately about uh, radicalization or extremists. So let's talk about this. In 2011, you actually had an extremist, not al Hassan, who shot up the place. Okay, and there's still no security cameras. So you actually have had cases of terrorism, of active shooters, and there still are no security cameras. So uh, some are going to say that 
you know, it would cost too much uh, to set up security cameras. So I'm, I'm going to try to find like a really tactful, mild way of responding to this. And I'm just going to say that's fucking horseshit. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like that, how, how much are you spending every Monday on command maintenance? And you can't buy like a security camera. Like every like every gas station has figured this out. So don't give me this about it'll take it'll cost too much to set up security cameras. Like w one of the reasons why I'm making this video is now that Congress is getting involved and in talking about maybe making new laws, they got to do this with the right information. And like the most important part of this report was buried in like a minor sentence fragment. Again, like if there was a little security camera in a hallway of an arms room where we have 50 caliber machine guns where we have CLUs to launch Javelin missiles, okay, like some pretty pretty nasty stuff that you wouldn't fall in the wrong hands. If we had a little security camera in a hallway like that with a lot of pretty badass weapons, the first thing any investigation would see is, hey, why did two people go in this arms room and only one came out? Like this murder investigation would have been solved the next day. In fact, maybe it wouldn't even happen because there'd be that sense of deterrence that, hey, if I decide to be a uh, evil sociopath and murdering people, uh, I am going to go to prison for the rest of my life or I'm going to go on death row and get executed. And maybe he wouldn't have even done it in the first place. I don't know. What I'm insane though is that would have solved the problem. But let's not talk about that. Let's make this whole thing about sexual harassment, which again, I am not saying sexual harassment is not a problem. I'm open to ideas on how to fix it. Okay, I'm, I'm open to ideas. I, I don't have the solution. I'll be honest. I, I'm open to ideas on how we can make things a, a better place. But again, that is being used as a distraction from the real issue of the lack of uh, physical security on post. So unfortunately, that's also not the only thing that went wrong with this investigation. Now, again, I don't have any access to law enforcement sensitive information, but what I do have are the personal accounts of people that were uh, involved in this process. Uh, and nothing that I'm about to say is stuff that hasn't already been talked about by pretty much every soldier in the unit. And I would assume other units as well, since word gets around. So if you want, you can just ask around, you'll hear the same answers, but I would say, is it true that in, and I, I wasn't there just asking the question, but uh, is it true that one of your investigators yelled at a personal friend of specialist Gian that he was a rapist? when there is absolutely no evidence to indicate that, that he was anything other than a personal friend, uh, were you trying to get a false confession? Because, I mean, th this stuff happens. Like, if you don't think false confessions happen, like, th this stuff happens. So, like, were you trying to get a false confession or are you just a sociopath or a little bit of both? Um, I don't know. I wasn't there, but, you know, who was there is the camera inside the interrogation room. So how about let's just play the tapes and, um, and we'll see. You can play my tapes. You brought me in so you can play my tapes. I got nothing to hide. You know, I, I got nothing to hide. My record is clean. I, I am very transparent. There, I have nothing to hide. My character is unimpeachable. All right. Plenty of people will vouch for me. Uh, I would also ask, is it true that CID didn't find blood residue in the arms room until multiple weeks or was it even months later? Um, even after you visit that arms room multiple times, like, I don't know what kind of bargain basement crime scene investigators that you've had. And again, Nothing I'm I don't have access to any like, you know, ninja type information like this is this is word that's going around town. This is this I'm, I'm not saying anything that plenty of soldiers haven't talked about already. So you, you are free to try to shut me up or get me kicked off YouTube or whatever. But well, one, I can upload this to censorship resistant platforms. Um, secondly, again, my character is unimpeachable, but let, let, let's say you are able to cancel me or whatever. Well, I think more people will come forward and they're going to say the exact same thing too. So nothing that I'm saying, uh, is not protected by the whistleblower act of 1989. Uh, I've already reached out to legal experts, so I don't think you're going to win the battle of trying to get me canceled. Um, just saying, uh, if you guys actually fix a problem, I'll just go away on my own accord. Uh, regardless though, Look, point being is CID completely dropped the ball on this, uh, but let's not talk about that. Let's all call this a sharp problem, which again, not saying sharp is not an issue, but this is just being used as a distraction. Okay, so I want to talk about the 15-6 investigation itself because you know this is supposed to be like the be-all, end-all investigation of Fort Hood. They're supposed to like get to the bottom of, of everything and go through every corner and uh, be the historic record. And it has some things that are inconsistent and some things that are completely false. Now, some of it is probably valid. Some things uh, I actually wasn't even aware of. Uh, again, I'm just a captain. I, I don't see everything. Uh, for most of the time, I was just a lieutenant too. I didn't promote to captain until uh, the end, until after all of this. 
So some things I can't really speak to, but where I started getting red flags and realizing, hey, something's not right with this report, something is funny, and maybe think, whoa, now we're really going off in a crazy land that this is looking more like a witch hunt than a real report. Uh, it's when to start talking about the arms rooms. Uh, this is something that I'm intimately familiar with since I was a troop exec or troop meeting company a executive officer. So I'm very familiar with this. And this is when I started seeing red flags with this report. So I'm going to read you from this report verbatim. This is the redact uh, the redacted copy that's posted on the internet. So I'm not I'm not revealing anything that isn't already posted publicly on the internet. Let me read verbatim. So this is from page 101 to 102. 3CR did not have a policy slash SOP specifically governing arms rooms operations or daily opening and closing procedures. Okay, so what they're talking about, closing an arms room, um, this is trying to make it sound way more complicated than it really is. So what it is, is you know when you're done the arms room, a senior leader comes down uh, in the presence of the armorer, counts all the weapons and, or NVGs, whatever, make sure that they're still there, that it matches the hand receipt, meaning the official record, that you know we, we don't have a missing weapon. So it's to double check the armorer the armorer, Aaron Robinson is an armor, but whoever's the armor, you know, my armor, their armor, whoever, uh, is, uh, I was not Aaron Robinson's XO, by the way, uh, but just saying, my armor or Aaron Robinson or whoever, that they're not, you know, doing anything improper, that it, it's a double check to make sure that when we're closing the arms room, that all the weapons are there. That's what closing the arms room is. Uh, yeah, you don't have an SOP for how to brush your teeth in the morning, but you know people manage to get on just fine. But anyways, let's say they try to hem us up for not having an SOP for just telling a senior leader to count the weapons. Let's let's, let's roll with it for a second. The Res Regimental Engineer Squad did not have a policy slash SOP governing arms room operations or daily opening and closing procedures. COVID nineteen impacts compounded the problem. Troops of the regiment relied on and utilized the DES Department of Emergency Services arms room book and SOP template. The DES arms room book and SOP template established the, quote, basic minimum standards, end quote, and it was expected that commanders would develop the template further to increase arms room security as necessary. None of the troop level arms room SOPs have been modified from the DES template by the troop commanders. Uh, therefore, none of the troops level arms room SOPs contain comprehensive opening and closing procedures. Okay, so let's talk about that. So in here is a blatant false statement. They were saying that it was expected that commanders would develop the template further to increase arms room security as necessary. Okay, that is a false statement. We were told in the schoolhouse, in the EXO schoolhouse, use the DES template verbatim. That is what was put out. That was the expectation that was put out. So them saying, no, you're supposed to add more, that 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 is a total false statement. So I got to now wonder what else is in this 156? Because again, I don't know everything. I don't see everything at Fort Hood. I'm just one guy. When I see something that's glaringly false like this, I now got a question, what else are you lying to me about or what else is selective truth? Like I imagine there is a lot of truth in this report that some things are like legitimately valid, but when I see lies about something that's fairly minor like this, like you, you know what they're doing here? Like they're trying to like just go through paperwork and rather than talk about the lack of security cameras or how CID is totally botched, Rather than talk about that, they're trying to make this issue like, oh, well, you had this slight paperwork error with, with this thing or that thing, or trying to make things sound more complicated than they really are. Like, this is a distraction from the real issue. So when you're lying to me about something minor like this, I wonder, well, what else are you lying to me about? So this is when I started seeing red flags in this report. And, you know, again, I would encourage other people maybe to come forward too as whistleblowers that um, I'm just one guy. Uh, so when I saw this, it stood out to me. I wonder, well, what else are you lying to me about? But again, you know, at no point ever was it put out that you're going to expand from this template or anything. So if, if it was the case that you want to have like how to brush your teeth, how to put your pants on in the morning, how to, you know, you know, how to start your car, if you want that in your SOP, then okay, we can do that. But you got to put that as an expectation. The guidance given was use the DES template verbatim. In fact, what we do is once we build an SOP, meaning basically we put our commander's name in, uh, you know, put, put the relevant names in the SOP, just copy paste that. We then send it over to Fort Hood DES for them to digitally sign it, meaning they're giving their stamp of approval. So not only did we use the SOP that Fort Hood said we should use, but then we then validated it with Fort Hood itself to say, hey, this is our SOP. Are, are you okay with it? Oh, you are? Great. In fact, we have it digitally signed where you said that you're okay with it. So they're trying to hem people up now for following the protocol that they put in place. 
So when you want to lie to me about something basic like this in the 15.6, I got to now go back and question, well, what else is in this report that is totally false too? And this is just one thing I see as one guy, but I'd encourage others to come forward as well. So let's talk about that some more, actually, because a big part of why I'm making this video is, you know, some good people got thrown under the bus unnecessarily and some bad dudes got away totally scot-free. Uh, I cannot speak for everyone that faced some sort of action on this. So as far as what happened in first cav, I, I have absolutely no idea because I, I that, that was not my unit. As far as maybe other leaders in 3CR, I, I can't speak to that. Uh, I, I don't know everybody. You know, I'm just a captain. I'm not the CG on post. Uh, I do want to talk, though, about the maintenance control officer position. So this position, um, I'm not going to use any names. In the 15.6 report, uh, this position, uh, meaning he or she, oversees uh, the mechanics, Vanessa Gein being one of them, uh, this report said that this position is not a platoon leader position. Uh, this report also identified uh, deficiencies where the amount of non-commissioned officers uh, in um, in the forward support troop did not fully fill the MTO, meaning how many NCOs that uh, the unit was supposed to have. So the MCO position is not a full PL position, meaning he or she is doing staff work, uh, meaning you know, he or she has other things to do. Also, the amount of non-commissioned officers was not what it was supposed to be, uh, what HRC says it's supposed to be. Well, okay, the unit cannot magically just generate non-commissioned officers. Like, we can't just go out to big army and say, hey, give us more NCOs. That's not how it works. And if you want a PL, then you should have assigned another lieutenant over there. Okay, instead, what happened is they threw some individuals in these leadership positions under the bus unnecessarily when the 15-6 report itself said that these people were not effectively equipped to monitor everything that was going on. All right, I wanna dig into this matter a bit more because some might ask, why am I going the social media route? Why am I trying to go public with this instead of going through official channels? Well, I did. This is a memorandum of record, or for record, I should say. Uh, names redacted out because uh, I don't wanna publicly uh, post it on the internet. If you wanna dox anybody or send stalkers to harass people or try to home invade them or threaten things like that, you, you send them to me from now on. Okay, I, I will absorb that at my level, which by the way, this happened. You had just random 3CR people who you had stalkers try to run people's wives off the road who had nothing to do with this or try to murder people's pets. Like th this happened or try to like home invade people's like private residences and make them get security cameras. This was in 2020. Uh, it was when, you know, people had nothing to do but just watch social media all day and probably get radicalized by it. But, you know, from now on, you want to dox anybody, you, you dox me. You, you, you send your death threats to me. I, I will absorb that at my level. So I'm not going to mention anyone's names except for my own in this. Uh, I am going to read, though, uh, sections from this memorandum for record. So Bluff, I have personally worked with, name redacted, since 2018 and wholeheartedly vouch for his character and I must respectfully disagree with actions proposed against him. When Specialist Gian was first reported missing, Redacted and myself were calling through drainage ditches and pipes during the first 48 hours to look for her. Key leaders were originally brought in since it was during the height of the, quote, uh, the COVID quarantine. So only key leaders were requested at first instead of mass participation. Redacted recently moved out of the his or her role and was therefore not one of the requested people, but he or she volunteered anyway since uh, Vanessa Gian was one of his or her soldiers while he was a uh, you know, position name and he felt a personal obligation to help. If the argument is that name redacted did not adequately monitor NCOs in his or her formation, either in role as a maintenance control officer or as troop executive officer, this is not substantiated either by um, his or her demonstrated character or even by the 15.6 report itself. In the 15.6 report, Within Echo FST, the maintenance platoon was not authorized as platoon leader, and the squadron did not assign an officer to serve in that position. The maintenance control officer was supervised and rated by the squadron executive officer and did not exercise authority and responsibility as a platoon leader. Okay, so that's a direct quote from the Army's own 15-6 report, that the MCO didn't have the authority that then the Army claimed he did and try to punish him for, for something that even the Army's own report said that he didn't have the authority. All right, so going on for my statement. A lack of platoon leader or, uh, or also deficiencies in how the maintenance control sergeant position is set up, uh, identified in report, means that both the maintenance control officer and the troop executive officer were not set up for success. Trying to punish, name redacted, for a situation that the Army's own report said that he did not have authority and responsibility for is unconscionable. 
if the lack of a platoon leader as an M2 position is indeed a problem, then this is a big army issue, not the issue of a company level officer or even a field grade officer. With all due respect, keep in mind I'm writing this for a general, this seems more like an attempt to placate social media than it is to achieve justice, and in the process, the army is wrongfully destroying the career and reputation of solid leaders. To fully understand the scope of his or her work, I need to mention the context of how 3CR was operating since I first met, name redacted. In 2018, 3CR was deployed, and myself and redacted were on home station mission command, rear detachment, but the HSMC had an aggressive training cycle of its own during the time. A big part of this was fixing equipment that had not been fully reset after the NTC 1804 rotation, which that was in 2017. Uh, excuse me, that was in 2018. Um, I misspoke. Except now Pioneer Squadron has had its best and most experienced operators deployed. And while on paper we had soldiers, many of them were in the process of leaving the Army for various reasons, and parentheses, ETS in some cases, med boards or chapters in others, and parentheses, were also were tasked out uh, various red cycles during HSMC. When the downreach personnel returned, 3CR and Pioneer Squadron immediately went into gunnery. We even redeployed some personnel before ADVON to prepare for gunnery. This unit had zero reset period after deployment and immediately went its training cycle for NTC 2002 and a possible eventual canceled uh, future deployment. 2019's op tempo from redeployment to NTC in the winter was extreme. The unit was run to the ground from 2018 to 2019. In 2020, the unit, like others, went in COVID lockdown in March. Our first major activity after lockdown was search and rescue operations for specialist ski in, where we basically put the whole regiment into the field when many units were still locked down. Our unit never got any credit for the search and rescue work and instead were told we were, quote, doing nothing, end quote, to find specialist ski in. We then later pivoted to a hasty preparation for another NTC rotation, 21 04, which was subsequently canceled, but still taxed the unit as far as op tempo for hasty preparation. Our unit's troopers were prepared to go to NTC without even completing gunnery, which we had to cancel due to mandatory people first stand downs. This unit had been run into the ground nonstop since NTC 1804. If the argument is that, yes, there was no maintenance platoon leader, parentheses, or adequate staffing of NCOs, also identified the 15 6, but a name redacted should, put should in quotes, have had some kind of magic ability to know every random detail of everything that possibly happened in this unit, this is not simply possible the op tempo pressure that the unit was under. We accomplished our mission. If we needed to accomplish more, then we needed more people and the right people as identified in the 15-6. There is no rank of the person or even captain or major, no matter how competent, that can fix an MTO problem or an op tempo problem. This unit was not set up for success, and instead the appearance is that the army is trying to punish leaders who were solid and were doing everything under their ability to take care of soldiers given the extreme constraints that they were under. By all means, punish someone if they committed sexual harassment. Name Redacted did not. He was part of the solution, not part of the problems that were fostered due to issues far beyond the control of any rank if they were in his or her position in Echo FST. Moreover, there is nothing that Name Redacted could have done to prevent the murder of Specialist Gian by Aaron Robinson, which was not even sexual harassment related or related problems within Echo FST as the murder was from another troop entirely. What would have prevented this murder, or at least solved the case within 24 hours, was a $100 Best Buy security camera, especially on an installation that has unfortunately seen other instances of crime, including terrorist active shooters. This lack of cameras was identified as a deficiency in the FHIRC report, but has still not been addressed. There's nothing, however, that at name redacted's level or the level of any company level officer that he or she could do to remedy the lack of security cameras. So again, I must respectfully disagree with actions proposed against redacted. I am 100% in favor of punishing individuals who committed sexual harassment or sexual assault to the fullest extent possible, but the fact that this is a high-profile case with media attention does not warrant railroading a leader with a demonstrated track record of success who, through the Army's own 15-6 report, was not a proper position to deal with NCOs who may have made inappropriate comments. Flipping the page. The Army has always made a point that soldiers, especially leaders, should choose the hard right choice instead of the easy wrong choice. Attacking, name redacted, is easy wrong choice. It may satisfy the media, but it is nothing to address a lack of security cameras on posts which may have actually prevented the murder and also wrongly attacks a leader who has a demonstrated track record of taking care of soldiers. That is the end of my statement. Uh, some things I left out uh, intentionally because, again, if you want to dox anybody from now on, you, you dox me. You send your stalkers. You send your death threats. You send your home invasion threats. You, you send that to me from now on. I, I will absorb problems at my level. 
I need to put that out there because apparently, I, I guess that's how things get done around here. Uh, apparently, that's how things get done around here is we operate on social media. We don't operate on facts or even common sense at this point. Uh, we operate on a social media. So maybe that's why Fort Bragg uh, isn't getting attention, even though apparently they have a, a high number of homicides. But uh, yeah, that's why I'm putting this out there uh, on, on, on a video because I guess that's how things work around here now. And again, that's why I turned comments off on this because I think a big reason why this discussion got railroaded so much is in 2020, everybody was on social media at the time because there was nothing else to do. You had probably Chinese PSYOPs because they know information is a war fighting function, spinning all these stories, trying to get people riled up. You had you know the usual internet trolls as well. Uh, the first red flag that I saw that this discussion was really going in a wrong direction was I saw comments and this got you know spread around a lot saying that uh, an NCO walked in on a uh, specialist Gian in a gym locker room. Okay, what gym? What gym? Okay, that didn't happen because all the gyms were closed because of COVID. But, you know, people ran with the story anyway. And now this has second, third order effects that this, like all this noise on social media caused these investigations, which were then used to whitewash the real problem of bad physical security of no security cameras on post. Again, that is the real problem. At no point am I saying sexual harassment is not a problem, but because of this social media radicalization, the army is now chasing after problem over here when that may be even be a problem, like that may be a valid problem, but let's ignore problem over here. That is what's happening. So I, I got comments turned off on this post because the one opinion I really care about is out of the soldiers that I actually serve with. That's it. Everything else, I mean, that, that's just background noise to me. So the reason why I'm mentioning that is when we're talking about, you know, taking action against some leaders, uh, well, you know, one, you're going to get some jackass on Twitter saying that, well, we're just taking some kind of administrative action against the leaders when, you know, Vanessa Guillen got murdered. Look, this is not about making like smart ass one-liners. No, what this is about is if you want to punish people, you have to punish the right people. But right now, the right people are not being punished. The wrong people are. And that has second and third order effects. What that does then is maybe you should look at why pretty much all the lieutenants are getting out. You know, your retention rate right now is pretty bad. And even up the ranks too, at the captain major ranks, uh, when people realize that all they have to do is just be at the wrong place at the wrong time and through no fault of their own, like a, a violent random act can mean that, um, you know, they can land themselves in some hot water Well, they're going to get out. And what this means is that your upper ranks, they're not going to be necessarily people that are the most like squared away competent people. They're going to be people that just stayed in longer. And this is going to have serious effects on morale and leadership. Like if you want to talk about toxic leadership, well, this is how it starts. Like if you're encouraging all the good guys to get out and good gals to get out, uh, your upper ranks, you're, you're going to have a problem. So that that's why I care. Like this is not just about like you know a little bit of injustice on you know on, th on you know going after the wrong people. Uh, I'm concerned about that also, but I'm also concerned about what this does for the army then, because what you're doing then is if you're incentivizing the good leaders to get out and you're punishing them for you know you set them up for failure, and then you're holding them accountable for something that they didn't even have the ability to control. Uh, they're going to get out and your upper ranks, they're going to be filled with people that just stayed in longer for, for a federal paycheck and federal retirement, not because they're passionate about the army or this is something they want to do. They stayed in just because they stayed in. And this is what your upper ranks are going to be. Just saying. So I want to talk about the culture of the unit, and this is a good way to segue off of that. So, uh, you know, some, some of the leaders that got punished, they were people that inherited problems, not people that caused problems. Uh, I want to talk about that. So when I first got the unit in 2017, uh, the culture, uh, the culture was, was pretty rough. Things actually got better over time. Uh, when I first got in the unit, there was a female officer who got a Gomar for a corroborated sharp violation. Uh, she still got promoted to captain and went off to the career course. So if we want to talk about cultural problems when it comes to sexual harassment, then we need to look back at the people who set that culture in the first place, not the people that inherited it. Now, this was in 2017. The murder happened in 2020. Uh, different command teams then, I would suggest maybe, maybe you rewind a little bit because cultures, they can be easy to break, but they can take some time to fix. I actually saw the culture get better uh, than when I first got there in 2017. So if we want to talk about unit leadership, uh, maybe we should look back then to what was going on then, uh, is it true that, now I wasn't here at the time, I wasn't here with this squadron commander, but uh, is it true that the pioneer commander at that time uh, when this Gomar happened for sexual harassment, who 
I guess she got let up the hook later. You know, what's that say about holding sexual harassment accountable? Uh, is it true that that commander at the time would fall out of squadron runs and had a tent set up for his or herself? You know, I'm not going to mention names in this. Um, YouTube has anti-bullying policies, so I'm not going to mention names. Um, is it true that this commander had a tent set up for his or herself that had the soldiers set up this tent uh, for them at National Training Center? Um, I mean, what's that say about about you know morale? That you know, I get special treatment because because I'm the boss. You know, I'm, I'm going to have my own sleeping tent. Um, I'm not going to set the example of physical fitness. Uh, I don't know, but again, this is what set the culture in place. Uh, let's look at that and not look at just the people that inherited the problems. I would also ask around this time, uh, if we want to talk about culture problems, let's go to the source. So what about the, the actual 3CR commander at this time? Uh, apparently had his own uh, personal WTF moments page set up just for him. So if we want to talk about cultural problems of the unit, we need to look back in time on like what set this culture in the first place, not just the people that inherited it. Because what's going to happen then is people trying to fix a problem, they're going to get out. The people that cause the problems are, from my knowledge, still in. Uh, and the people that are going to stay in that aren't getting out, well, I mean, this is how toxic this is how toxic cultures build because you get rid of the good leaders and the bad ones, you do nothing about them. So I want to bring up the topic of saying commanders are not taking sexual harassment seriously because uh, I, I do want to address that issue head on because you know even though I believe that the murder of Vanessa Guillen, that this is a physical security problem, meaning a lack of security cameras, as well as CID completely botching the investigation. I do think it's worth talking about sexual harassment uh, a little bit because I agree that you know it is something that we should do about. Again, nothing that I said in this video is I don't care about sexual harassment. Like th That's why I'm making a long form video like this so it cannot be taken out of context. But you know, when there's a sexual harassment or sexual assault, uh, this is more for the sexual assault, uh, CID has to do investigation, okay? So when you say commanders aren't taking it seriously, you know, realize that your hands are kind of tied. Now, I never was a commander, but your, your hands are kind of tied without a law enforcement investigation because how else can you convict someone? Like, we don't want to bring the burden of proof down to an unacceptable level uh, because, you know, we remember that scandal uh, back in the 2010s when colleges were just kicking out students on kind of accusations and turned out sometimes it wasn't really the case. So we don't want that. We do want an aggressive law enforcement investigation. So if someone is doing sexual assault, like they need to go to prison for a very, very long time. That's what needs to happen. And I, I fully support that, that if you sexually assault someone, you should be put in a jail cell for a very long time. Problem is, CID is screwing up here too. And look, it's not going to matter if commanders prosecute these cases or a civilian, you know, a civilian sort of force, whatever, judge, whatever you want to call it, uh, prosecutes these cases without an adequate law enforcement investigation. Like this is going to go nowhere, whether or not commanders do it or someone else does it or this guy does it or that guy does it. That is still going to be the proximate problem right there. That if law, if CID, if law enforcement isn't able to adequately investigate these cases, because they're ill-equipped, they're ill-trained, whatever the case may be, it's not going to matter who does it. So I'm bringing this up because now Congress is now talking about you know how we want to change how we handle sexual assault cases. It's not going to matter unless you fix CID. Like you could have commanders do it, you could have this guy do it or that guy do it. If you don't fix CID, you're not going to fix any of this. Um, so speaking of, I would have to ask: Is it true that in 20th Battalion, 36th Engineer Brigade, there has been a sexual assault? Not harassment, sexual assault investigation that's been dragging out for multiple months now. Um, if I was Rugged Six, I would lawyer up about it right now because even though it's not your fault, man, even though you're probably trying to prosecute this and you're waiting for the law enforcement investigation to come back, uh, you're probably thinking, what the hell is going on and am I going to get thrown under the bus next? Again, nothing that I'm saying is law enforcement sensitive because I don't have access to that information. I am saying stuff that every soldier right now is saying. You're here, you'll hear this around post. Just literally go around and start talking to people. Uh, I do think it's also important to bring up for the victim um, of this assault. Uh, I, don't, I don't know him or her, um, but I do want to bring it up. Uh, uh, is it true that an officer is involved in this? Um, I don't know. But again, I'm just saying what soldiers are already saying. So you're welcome to try to cancel me. You're welcome to try to shut me up. But I am just one guy and plenty more will come forward. And I hope this victim, uh, him or her, uh, if, if this case is true, gets justice. So if law enforcement could speed up their investigation, um, especially uh, if multiple witnesses uh, were able to corroborate this, 
I don't know. Just say what people are saying. So CID, you better fix yourself because look, it's not going to matter if commanders do it or this guy does it or that guy does it. If you don't fix CID, none of this is going to, none of this is going to matter who prosecutes these cases. So one thing that I do want to talk about though, is when this first popped off, uh, there were a lot of people in the media, I think trying to just get some attention for themselves, basically saying that we need a separate reporting procedure for sexual assault or harassment. So the thing is, so that does exist. Like that, that's a sharp program. Like that, that does exist. So if you want to say that maybe we should fix the program, okay, like I'm, I'm open to ideas, uh, but they were not saying that. They were saying that this program doesn't exist and that is just a false statement. So I'd say, you know, be cognizant about who you're getting information from because there is already a special channel to report this. And I'd encourage, you know, if you face sexual harassment or sexual assault, that you do report that through the channels because, um, you know, again, like you got to realize that commanders kind of have their hands tied. You know, if, if they don't hear something, then it, it's, it, it's hard to take action. Like, you know, you don't, you don't see everything that goes on around you. you. You just don't. Like you don't have like magic ability to see that. So if something is reported to you, there, there's only so much you can do. Um, and some of this is by design. Like in, in the program, you know, there's formal or informal reporting. There's restricted and unrestricted reporting. Sometimes you can't take action because that, and that's intentional. It's so that if a victim just wants to talk to the chaplain or just wants to get medical attention, they can do that, but not escalate the issue. So in that case, you can't take action as a commander. Now, if you want to say that's a bad policy, okay, we can say that, but that is the policy. So some people got thrown under the bus in this case for following the policy. It sounds like uh, from the 15-6, uh, depending how much you want to believe in this report, that because uh, again, I talked about some false reports in uh, in the what they were trying to dig up the arms room. Also, how the report said that the MCO was not a PL position, but then in the report later it recommends punishing the NCO, uh, punishing the MCO for having. Um, they're trying to have it both ways, basically. So essentially, the fifteen six has problems, but in this, um, it does sound loaded, like it was believable that uh, Vanessa Gian was sexually harassed. Um, again, I'm not saying this is like victim blaming or anything. I'm just saying this is because I, I just don't trust the fifteen six. I trust the people that that probably made these reports, but just. When I hear a few inconsistent report, I, I kind of have to question the rest. So again, like this is not victim blaming. This is not any of that. It just, I, I'm questioning this document as whole, but it does sound like it, it is believable that she was sexually harassed. But yeah, I, I'd encourage you guys, if you, are, if you are being sexually harassed, bring it up because, you know, because the, the formal or informal reporting, the restricted, unrestricted, like if a complaint doesn't make it to it through, th through the channels, Commanders don't have the authority sometimes to act, and that's intentional. So that if a victim, they just want to go to the chaplain or they just want to go to the hospital, they can do that and not make that a bigger issue. Uh, so some people got punished in this case for following the policy. Now, again, if you want to say it's a bad policy, sure, we can say that. But that was the policy at the time, and it still is the policy. So let's let's keep that in mind. All right, so now I want to talk about PAO, because that's how this turned from a local crime case to a national media story. So... Uh, I want to be very clear. The people that started the the social media looking for Vanessa Gian, that was us. That was us at the unit, the soldiers at the unit. That was us that originally brought the social media attention because we wanted to find her. Okay, that that was us that started it. We don't talk to media. So a big part of this is, you know how it goes. Like if you say something to media, they'll chop up your quote, take it out of context and make it sound like you said something totally absurd. And look, I have a very small YouTube account. Um, I highly doubt this is going to go big or viral, whatever you want to call it. But like, let's just say it does. Um, I'm going to be very selective what kind of media that I talk to because, you know, again, what they'll do is they'll take what I said about how the problem is with CID and how sexual harassment is being used as smokescreen and they'll make it say, Captain Cook hates sexual harassment victims and he wants them to suffer even more. And oh, okay, dude, like cool, cool. But yeah, we don't, we don't talk to media. So we assumed PAO is the experts and that they could handle this. Well, instead they made this problem a lot worse. And keep in mind, this is 2020 when a lot of people were indoors at the time because this is when like the quarantines were at their highest. So they have nothing to do except watch social media all day and just continue to get more radicalized by it. So PAO... Uh, they completely dropped the ball on this. This is during a time when everyone was just consuming social media 24 seven because there's nothing else to do and just let people get more and more radicalized. Like they let a narrative get in place that 
uh, we were doing nothing to look for her, which I want to completely correct the record on that. Like within 24 hours, we were like, I was crawling through drainage pipes, me and my operations sergeant, we were doing that. Like we were, we were looking everywhere. Like we had aviation assets overhead with thermals. Um, if something was on Fort Hood, like a paper clip, we would have found it. We don't control what happens off post. Like we can't send drones off post because like there's, there's rules on using military intelligence stuff uh, on, on a civilian population. Like you, you just can't do that. Um, again, I don't make up the rules here. So if you want to say, hey, why didn't the CG talk to blah, 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 you'd have to ask them. All right. So point being though, is you can't use military intelligence assets off post. So if you're going to ask, you know, why don't we send out the shadows or the, the gray eagles? Um, I mean, I, I don't make that decision, but that would be a question to ask uh, as far as, you know, why didn't CID or the FBI maybe do more uh, off post? Uh, again, you, you would have to ask them. It seems like uh, the FBI has uh, a lot of problems nowadays, but nonetheless, but like saying that we were not looking for, like we we're the ones that started the social media trend to, to, to get attention for this case. Like that, that was us that started. So I want to correct the record on that. So why I bring this up though, is that information is a war fighting domain and uh, we got our ass kicked. And PAO did nothing to help us with that. So, you know, you've heard Fort Hood PAO story. You've heard Big Army story at the the DA level, at the DOD level, and you've heard the uh, the story of you know some lawyers that have gotten involved in this case. But you've not heard the stories of the soldiers actually at this unit, which that is the purpose of this video uh, to talk about that. And um, you know, I expect there may be some retaliation from this video. Uh, there's some that are going to say, I don't care about sexual harassment, which that is completely untrue. I've said in this video, that's not true. They're going to say it anyways. That's fine. Um, you got, you got some options here. So you could try to dispute what I said in this video, like on the facts, but you're going to lose, uh, because they are true. You could try to attack my character. Uh, I don't think that'll work because, I'm unimpeachable. Uh, my character, like I got plenty of people that'll vouch for me. Uh, let's say you do manage to shut me up though. So one, I could just upload this video to a censorship resistant platform like Telegram or others. Uh, so that message will be out there. Secondly, I think more people will come forward too. I think I'm just the first one. More people will come forward. I've really just scratched the surface with this video on, on CID's failures. Uh, so more people are going to come forward. It's not just going to be me. So let's take that option off the table too. Third option is you actually just fix the problem. And then I'm just going to go away on my own. Like, you're not going to have to worry about me. Look, this is not meant to be like an anti-military video. Like, I, I had a great time in the Army. I mean, no one really enjoys staff duty on, on a weekend. or I mean, there's not, It's, not all, it's not, not all fun games. But uh, no, I, I, I want to see more good people join the Army. And I'm making this video to try to fix the problem. I'm making this video because it made a lot of media attention. And the media seemed to go away when the support came out. Uh, they just took the support as gospel truth when the report has a number of inconsistencies with it. Uh, the only opinion I really care about is that of the soldiers that I actually served with. So if the media or Chinese psyops or social media or Twitter wants to say this or that about me, uh, I don't really care. Like my, my goal here is to look out for the soldiers of the unit. That That's it and that's all. Um, I'm also concerned when you see good people getting out of the military because they realize that they could just be at the wrong place at the right, uh, the wrong place at the wrong time. Because I talked about, well, a lot of things in this video, but you know, sexual harassment, yeah, it's a problem, but it is also being used as a smokescreen from the real problem, which is lack of physical security on post, like, you know, not having security cameras, even when you've had active shooters that were radicalized, like a lot of people are talking about radicalization or extremism. Okay, well, you had an extremist in 2011, Nadal Hassan, who shot up the place, and uh, we still don't have security problem, uh, security cameras. So uh, that's a problem, especially you think in an arms room where you got 50 cals, you got Mark 19s, you got CLUs for javelin missiles. Um, you got all kinds of crazy stuff. So you would think that there'd be some type of more badass security for that because it's not just active shooters. You could have terrorism. You could have regular crime, like random acts of violence like this. Uh, that might prevent that. That might even prevent like sexual harassment or sexual assault. Like if there's a if there's a complaint, well, let's just pull up the camera. Let's let's see what happened. And maybe CID could actually close some of these cases for a change. I'm a little frustrated though with the media that they took the support, uh, these reports, uh, both of them, uh, just as gospel truth. Uh, even despite Fort Hood being under the the, the scrutiny that it was. Um, I'm a little confused too why Fort Bragg is under the same scrutiny when you know, apparently they have an unusual number of homicides going on. Uh, maybe it should be. Uh, but either way, you know, I think a lot of this was just done for clickbait clout back in 2020 when everyone was on social media uh, because it didn't address the issues at hand. Um, and that's a problem because now Congress is talking about making new laws. Well, you got to do that with the right information. 
right now you don't have the right information. You have some reports that were false. Uh, you have some good guys thrown under the bus unnecessarily and some bad ones that got off scot-free. Again, I cannot speak for every leader at, at the post. So you know, maybe there were some bad dudes that got fairly punished. Now, I cannot speak for everyone. I'm, I, um, actually, I want to talk about this report. So I have the redacted copy that was... Uh, that's what you guys posted online. Um, I do think that if I put it a Freedom of Information Act request for the unredacted copy, that I probably would win that request, especially since it sounds like I might have been mentioned in that. Uh, when it comes to the arms room, that's how I am so familiar with your false statements about the arms room, how you falsely claim that, hey, there should be this or that about closing out the arms room. Nope, that is a total false statement that you made there. That is never anything. That is no kind of guidance that ever been put out. I will get you a stack of sworn statements up to the ceiling that corroborates exactly what I said. So I'm pretty sure if I put in a Freedom Information Act request that I would win that request to get a copy of that report. I haven't decided yet, but that is something that I am thinking about. But the point is, uh, if I didn't make this video, then those reports, that would be the historical record. And that's wrong. Like that, Those reports, that would be what just slapped the table on this. Hey, you know what? This case is closed. We can move on now. And that's not the case. These reports at best have inconsistencies and at worst have straight up false statements in it. Like in the FHIRC report, they buried the most important part as one tiny little line towards the back about the lack of security cameras on post. That is what would solve this murder like the next day, maybe the same day, maybe would have prevented it in the first place. If you know that, hey, if I'm going to be an evil sociopath that I'm going to go to jail or I'm going to get executed, I'm, I'm going to end up on death row. Uh... That was the most important part, and they buried the lead on that in a, barely a full sentence uh, towards the back. And the rest, hey, let's just talk about sexual harassment, which, again, I am not saying sexual harassment is not a problem. It is a problem. You know, we should, we should address sexual harassment, okay? Literally, at no point am I saying sexual harassment is not a problem. However, it is being used by Big Army as a distraction from the real problem, which is physical security. And frankly, if we fix the physical security, maybe that might cut down on sexual harassment and sexual assault, too, because, hey, if... Someone did something inappropriate. Let's let's play back the tape. Let's kick this guy out of the army. Let's send him to jail. Whatever the case may be. Uh, instead, you have a female officer who got a gomar for sexual harassment. Which, by the way, like I, I don't even know what you got to do. As I mean, look, this, this is going to be an adult conversation. Okay, it is difficult to convict a female of sexual harassment. Um, I think that's just adult to adult conversation. I. <laughs> It, it, that is a difficult thing, and that still happened. Uh, so I wasn't there when this happened, but it sounds, uh, well, at least egregious enough to give her a Gomar, and she still made it to captain and went on to the captain's career course. This is back in 2017. So if you want to talk about cultural problems, let's look back there at what set this culture in place and not the leaders that inherited this culture, and they were the ones that, that got hit. So let's talk about that. Oh, and uh, one thing too, not, not even the media, but if the Fort Hood Independent Review Commission or the 15-6 people, if they want to reach out to me, I'm definitely not saying anything to them. So even forget about me not going on the record with the media. I'm definitely not going on the record with those two committees. I have absolutely nothing to say to you guys. If you guys reach out, I'm just going to hit spam and send you to my spam folder because you had a chance to get this right. And was actually kind of hopeful at first that, hey, maybe uh, these investigations, they could get to the bottom of problems at Fort Hood, including some things that really affect morale beyond this, like why is the neck just chronically broken and our internet is horrible? Like we almost kind of joke around, you know, we'd be really squared away for a Chinese cyber attack just because our systems are down anyways. Uh, how about we fix problems like that on Fort Hood? Instead, you made this into a witch hunt. So yeah, I, I have absolutely nothing to say to you guys. Uh, honestly, you should give the taxpayers their money back. Like th this, this is an embarrassment of public service. Th this is an embarrassment. So there may be more uh, that I want to talk about in future videos, but look, I'll be honest. I just want to go back to talking about crypto. I want to talk, go back to talking about finance and other issues. Like I never intended this to be like the, the army YouTube. Like that, that was not my goal in this. It just came to a point where I was in the middle of a firestorm on a, uh, a story that made national attention and, and someone's got to say it. And if it's got to be me, then it's got to be me. So thanks for watching.